peace and the Holy Spirit, God. We thank you for breakthrough upon breakthrough. Hallelujah. We thank you for deliverance from anger, deliverance from stress, especially targeting anger. Yeah, I can feel it. I've been feeling it a lot lately. So let me just lower this a bit. Let me just lower it. So let's see. So I'm just going to share candidly. Anger is not a fun thing, period. I mean, the Bible does say in Ephesians 4, you know, be angry and do not sin. There are times to be angry. There's times where anger is just like a demonic thing. And you can like, it's just really like horrible rage things that are just like, it's like you, when somebody loses control, you know, it's just demonic. There's being angry and being able to like pause, be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, where you can actually like have some control, self-control. I'll use that word, self-control, which is the fruit of the spirit and allowing God to like come to those places and deal with the anger and have a, a conversation with Holy Spirit where you can actually forgive, release all that stuff. You know, not that, not that one should not get angry. I mean, there's times where anger happens, right? But then there's the demonic rage and like lack of control. Um, just like, rage that's what's coming to mind right now which is not you know that's not the anger that god's saying to be angry about that's demonic that needs the when it, when it gets to that point that's when someone should be aware that deliverance is needed um when one cannot you know pause allow allow god to guard their mouths you know when it, when it, when things just start coming out where every kind of thing is coming out from you know every everything that's just not you know ungodly so i just want to go there because i don't i, don't, I feel like you know people try to hide but anger is it can easily be exposed and i'm, I'm going to give you some examples so first of all it always like god always says you know take the plank out of our own eyes um, so I'll talk about myself first and I'm not going to be like pointing fingers at anyone. Cause, uh, you know, God's deal. God deals with us all the time. Like God since today, like I remember after I got saved, after I got saved, God began to deal with all the junk. Some stuff just disappeared right away after salvation. And then some things, some things he just, uh, I had to pray through. I had to get deliverance. I had to go get inner healing prayer. I had to get um, things taken care of. And some things were just taken care of in the secret place, which in the in Psalm 91, it talks about how deliverance is is our portion. So I'm going to really, I'm going to pray really quickly and then I'm going to move forward in some things. Father God, just go to the places where there's anger right now in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you touch uh, individuals who are feeling anger. Heal in Jesus' name. I thank you for your increase, your presence in Jesus' name. I thank you for flooding emotions right now. Flooding emotions with your perfect peace, flooding emotions with your truth, that we wouldn't believe lies, any open doors to anger, God, that they would be shut by knowing the truth in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that your truth uh, sets us free. Your truth is what keeps us free. Your truth and not believing lies is what keeps us free, and sh and that helps us to shut the door completely to anger. Um, and anything that's associated with that in Jesus name, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for healing and restoration in Jesus name. I break off anger right now. I command anger to leave, 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 leave now in Jesus name, leave. We, re we repent God in Jesus name. I, I can't repent for other people. So I'm just saying I repent. So anyway, I've partnered with anger. God, I repent in the name of Jesus Christ for part of any anger, any way of part of anger, um, just for whatever reason, um, I renounce it in my life. I ask for you to flood me with truth so I can be aware and guard my mouth, watch over the doors of my lips, that I would speak things that are uh, pleasing to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so God is merciful. God is good. I just know that he's been working on me since uh, the day I got saved, before salvation, the things that would come out of my mouth when I'd be angry, uh, like every every curse word you could think of would come out of my mouth. Um and yeah, the rage was serious. Like if you, if I got triggered, my God, I, I mean, only God knows how long I would be at, so, like, you know, off on someone. Um, but that was, you know, that's pre-Christ, right? But after Christ, it's like little by little, you know, that doesn't just go away. You don't just get saved and then all of a sudden you, you are a new creation. Hallelujah. Right. But there's deliverance needed and that's not talked about enough. People think like, okay, one day you just get saved and everything changes. No. 
um, I got saved in my bedroom. I did not go to like a church. I didn't get like prayer, do a salvation prayer. It was literally God wrecked me in my bedroom. Some of y'all know I had a dream. Um, I got connected to a stranger. The stranger gave me a phone number. I called the phone number on a particular day and there was a person on that prayer call that ended up uh, praying out details from my dream and then I wept to God. I cried, cried, cried and then I got saved because I just literally gave my life to him. That was it. But after giving my life and then he just spiritual warfare began instantly it wasn't all of a sudden like i didn't know what i was doing but god knew what he was doing and things just started manifesting just like that <laughs> like things were happening in the night like i was scared like i was like nobody told me this nobody told me nothing about christianity i didn't know i just learned from you know learning things for myself diving in the bible trying to find out why things were happening trying to go anywhere I could go to get explanation, try to go anywhere I could go to get prayer, um, feeling things happening in my body, not understanding why it's happening, feeling vibrations, not understanding why that's happening, um, weird stuff, um, attacks in the night, feeling like I'm being like suffocated, weird, weird dreams, you know, strange stuff. You just knew it was like not God, right? So I was under heavy spiritual attack and prior to Christ, I was under spiritual attack, but that didn't, I didn't have the sensitivity as I got, you know, when I got saved, I started really being sensitive to the spirit realm on another level. I, yeah. So, so the thing is I discovered I needed deliverance. Um, and praise God, God just started connecting me to people who would pray for me. And then I got connected to a ministry. And then I just, it's funny, like, as I was getting delivered, I was learning about deliverance and inner healing ministry. And then God just started giving me the tools, teaching me how to pray, pray for myself and pray for others. And then just as time went by, just more deliverance. And the thing is, I got corrected. So I, I started learning how to hear God's voice. And in the hearing of God's voice, I didn't realize all this stuff about conviction of sin. I didn't understand, like, you know, how how much God speaks. I mean, before you know it, God's telling me apologize to this person. God's telling me to forgive that person. God's telling me, hey, you need to be gentle. God's correcting me left and right. I'm like, this is not what I'm used to. This is not normal. But this, this, this became the whole salvation and sanctification walk that I didn't know about. So people who don't grow up in the church, um, they start to learn these things either. I mean, it depends on how you get connected uh, to God. If you get radically saved in your bedroom or somewhere where you're not like discipled, uh, you're just going to learn some things, right? Until you get connected. Um, but the thing is, you need to get connected somewhere where people are actually talking about prayer and, you know, abiding and getting to know God and connecting to God. And in your connecting to God, you will learn about deliverance. Um, there are promises in the Bible about ways God delivers from Genesis to Revelation. God is a deliverer. That's his, that's who he is. He's a God who delivers. He is a God of salvation. He's a God of healing and God cares about our emotions. And he also cares about our physical healing and, and many things. He cares about the hair on our head. He cares about our name. He cares about our, like the nation we come from. He cares about so many things. There's just so many details God cares about, which is beautiful. And the more we spend time with him and the more we give him our cares and frustrations and anger and stress and any lies we're believing, which you're not going to know. Like if you're believing a lie, you're not really going to know unless the Holy Spirit reveals it to you. Um, I mean, the, you know, lies are there for a reason. You're not going to know unless you just start getting convicted. You're like, huh, maybe I should really check into that, you know? So one way to really be aware what, that you need deliverance is by just asking the Holy Spirit simply, hey, Holy Spirit, do I need deliverance? More than likely, you're going to hear the word yes. But if you're perfect, please let me know if you're perfect. And that would be the reason why you hear no. But, you know, that's that's probably lying spirit talking to you. <laughs> anyway. So, um, deliverance looks different for everyone. I'm not saying like, I don't mind. Like I went hard because I was just like, I don't want. So if you, if you're feeling physical attacks, like crazy stuff, like I know people, I've met different kinds of people and some people have experienced the torment that I experienced. When you're experiencing that as a new believer in Christ, you're going to go get delivered. Believe me, you're going to run around looking from church to church to make sure someone's praying for you. That's how desperate I was. So that's why, um, I just grew quickly in the Lord because I just 
ran after it. And that's my prayer for people. Like when I meet people, I'm like, go after the Lord. Don't wait for someone to run to you to help you. You run after God. Run. So, Father God, I just thank you for deliverance. I thank you for freedom from anger, since that's what we're targeting right now. I thank you for the correction you've given me, and I pray for boldness for individuals that need that correction, too, that they would be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, just to hear. Like, like let us be humble, all of us, including myself. Let us be humble before God and just be aware when he's correcting us. Let us be aware when he wants us to change our speech. Let us be aware when he's saying to apologize to someone. Um, he's told me to apologize to people on multiple occasions, um, and I humbled myself, and I went and apologized. Um, there are times where he literally told me not to apologize and to just pray because, um, it was interesting. It's just, just, you just have to follow the Holy Spirit. When I did that, those people actually came back to me and apologized for whatever it was, but still he told me to forgive. I don't wait for apologies before I forgive. I forgive regardless, whether an apology comes or not, let us be ones who are quick to forgive and release and not hold on to grudges. Let us be ones who don't want to be bound to uh unforgiveness it's not it's not fun to hold on to that i shared a live uh a while ago about um the heaviness that comes with unforgiveness um it's not fun you, believe me it's not a burden you want to carry um may god deliver all of us may we continue to walk in forgiveness may we get free of that um and walk in god's truth i'm going to read ephesians 4 do not grieve the spirit verse 25 to 32 Starting from verse 25, therefore, put it away lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And verse 31, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, I hope I said that right, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And the verse 32, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiven one another, Forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for forgiving us. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for the grace to forgive. Thank you for the beauty of forgiveness. Thank you for the blessing that comes with forgiveness. Thank you for the freedom that comes with forgiveness. Thank you for the healing that comes through forgiveness. Hallelujah. And the deliverance that comes through forgiveness. Yeah, God, I thank you just for your presence and your breakthrough. I remember... God, you are so good. I just love you, Father God. I just remember the goodness of God and how great you are. I remember you told me not to be friends. <laughs> Do not be friends with wrath. There was a time a long, long time ago in my early walk in Christ. I don't know what I did. What like what? It was, I was just getting angry a lot. I was getting upset, and God was like, "Do not or like do not be friends with wrath." I was like, "What?" What type of prophetic word is that, God? Anyway, he would, he just was like, don't be friends with wrath. Like, that's not your friend. And I'm like, wow, all the correction. And, you know, I challenge you, if you're not ever getting uh, convicted or corrected and, and you feel like you're always right about everything, perhaps you do need deliverance. Perhaps you need to ask God to search your heart to see if there's anything in you that needs to be uprooted, pulled out, bitterness, grudges. I mean, I don't know. I have not met anyone that's perfect in this lifetime. Nobody, whether you're a teacher, leader, Christian leader, whatever you are, I have yet to meet anyone perfect. And and going back to anger, not only do I not like to, part, like anger is not something, I, if I partner with it in the wrong way, I, I repent. <laughs> talk to God about it. Uh, the way I deal with stuff is just to have conversations with God. I tell him I'm upset, uh, you know, or, you know, if I don't open my mouth, he'll come at me. Like it's either I start talking or he just, he pursues me a lot because I, I just can't like, I'm very sensitive. If I'm upset, it's very difficult to, to get stuff done. So I have to like tackle it. I have to get, you know, tackle it. So that's just my personality. Um, I can't stay upset too long. I have to like 
get like get rid of it, whatever it is. Um, I don't like to be uh, held down. Um, yeah, Father God, I just thank you for your presence. I thank you for breakthrough, healing, and restoration. I thank you just for healing in our hearts, grace to follow you, grace to speak in truth to our neighbors, grace to speak love and life over our neighbors, grace to just forgive and bless God. I break off weariness right now. All the weariness that um, is attached to like having to continually forgive, God, give us grace. Give us mercy, mercy. Thank you for, thank you for mercy, God. Thank you for mercy. Give us the grace to continually forgive, even though it it, it may seem frustrating. Um, I know I've, I've had those conversations with God. Like how many times do I have to forgive so so? It's in the Bible too. I'm pretty sure He says seventy times seven. It's just ongoing. Um, it doesn't mean you have to continually hang out with that person or continually be best friends, but it's very important to have conversations with people. Um, Use wisdom on that one, too. <laughs> uh, I remember a time where the Holy Spirit literally told me to wait, wait before I had a conversation with someone because of the timing and just like where the person was at in the right time, even though it took some time and I was very heartbroken. Um, this person contacted me and we were able to have a, uh, a conversation where there was no like accusation or anything. It's like apologies on um you know, there were apologies and, you know, a uh, conversation about what happened, but it was not like a rageful conversation because I've noticed in the past, if, if, like ha trying to have a conversation with someone when they're heated and upset and not wise, it's not going to get anywhere. You're going to hear one person yelling and you're the only one like, you know, quiet, just listening and taking on their wrath, which I, I just refuse to do that personally um, and be a punching bag for someone. So. I believe in timing to forgive and you, you do, you do have uh, a say in it where you, if you feel like not comfortable or safe, you can say, Hey, right now is not a good time. Can we have this conversation when we're both at peace? Hey, now's not a good time to talk. I think maybe we can have this conversation where our, our, you know, our tones, our voice is at a normal conversation level, not where it's like, you know, an outburst or a rage. Um, that's not God's will. So may God deal with our hearts. May we be able to speak to one another in love. May he give us grace to work on our speech. May we submit our tongues to the Lord for real. May we submit our speech to the Lord. God, I thank you for verse 26. Be angry. Do not sin. Give us grace to not be angry and to not. Uh, sorry. Let me repeat. Let me rephrase that. Give us grace to when there's anger, God, to not sin. Give us grace. What it says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Give us grace to deal with whatever needs to be dealt with before going to bed. If that if that's needed, whatever needs to be dealt with, let it be dealt with so that we don't give room to the devil, as it says in verse 27, nor give place to the devil. God, I just decree and declare the devil has no say in our lives in in, our, in marriages, in our households, over our children, over our friendships. And I just pray, God, we wouldn't open the door to the devil. That's the only way he has no place if we're not opening the door. May we have wisdom not to open the door to the enemy. May we have wisdom not to say, hey, Satan, you're welcome here because he's not. He's not welcome here. Who's welcome in our lives? Holy Spirit. So, God, we repent. And I say that on myself. Like, if you believe that, speak that over yourself, because honestly, I like I can't repent on your behalf. Um, we all have to personally repent and turn away from whatever it is, anger, wrath, frustration ourselves. We ourselves have to repent personally. I can just decree it like we repent, but it really, it's a personal choice. So may we have grace to repent and turn away from wrath and anger that we would not give place to the devil in Jesus name. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. God, I repent for any way that I let any corrupt word come out of my mouth that was not good for necessary edification, that it would impart grace to whoever I was speaking to, God, whoever was listening, God. I repent for any corrupt word that came out of my mouth. God, may your, may your words be upon my lips and may I speak truth and partner with the Holy Spirit in Jesus name. And I just, whoever wants to receive that, receive that for yourself. If you know that you need help with your speech, if you know that you need help to speak life over others, if you know that you get quick to anger and you, you need help to actually speak life over the person you're upset with, ask Holy Spirit for grace. Invite him into your conversation. Ask him for grace to know when to stop talking. 
ask him for grace to know when to speak up. Ask him for grace to know when to have the conversation. There's timing. Sometimes we feel like in the moment, in the heat of the moment is the time to talk. Many times it is not. Many times regret comes in, comes in there because uh, it's like, why did I speak that way? Why did I allow myself to say those things? Uh, may God be God over our speech. May God be God of our conversations and may God be God of our relationships in Jesus name. May we be ones who edify one another and speak life over one another in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May we speak truth over one another. May we actually hear the Holy spirit and speak what God says uh, over one another. I challenge you today, anybody you might be upset with to actually ask the Holy spirit. Hey God, what do you have to say about this one, this person, whoever it is? What do you have to say about fill in the blank, whatever the person's name is? What do you say? Even though I feel this way about this person, tell me what your word says about this person and what you personally have to say. Do you have a prophetic word for that person, God? And begin to pray that over them in your in the secret place. You don't have to tell them unless the Lord tells you to. Many things that God tells me about other people, I don't tell them. Many dreams I get about other people, I don't share with them. Um, I Anything I've shared publicly, it's probably like, I don't know what percentage out of all the things that, you know, I, I've actually written down. I Probably like, I don't know if it's even up to 2%. I don't even know. It's a very low number. I don't share that much. Um, may we be wise in what we share. If you see something negative about a brother or sister in Christ, you don't have to say anything. You can pray Bring them to the Lord and speak life over them. Don't come into agreement with what the devil says. If you hear a negative word about another person, cast that to God and speak life over that person. If you're feeling triggered around that person, ask the Holy Spirit for help. Ask Jesus to flow through those emotions and come to come be with you where you're feeling whatever the emotion is about that person and ask God conversations. Why do I feel bitterness around so-and-so? Why do I feel resentment towards so and so. Why do I feel such anger when anytime I'm around so and so? Why am I feeling hatred when I'm around this person? God, I don't even think I hate this person. Why am I feeling this way? Ask the Holy Spirit. Many of you probably have a gift of discerning spirits and he's trying to show you something. Some of y'all might just need to get delivered from that thing. Um, there's many reasons why people feel stuff. Um, for example, I've gone into stores and there's times where I felt like, for instance, um, whatever the person was going through. I, I, I remember going to a shop with uh, somebody and I was feeling such stress or whatever it was. It was just like a, a stressful feeling. And I felt led to just go up to the person and ask them like straight up, hey, are you feeling stressed out? And she just began to cry. She was bawling. She was crying in front of me and she, she was stressed out. And um, I prayed something over her. I don't remember. It was so many years ago. I prayed something over her and that was that. And I don't even know what what happened after that. And then they left. And there's times like that where I like, in fact, stress is something that's interesting. I've gone into places and he brings that up a lot. I'll feel stress on the person. And then like, I don't take it on as my, my own thing. I won't be like, cause I know I walked into that building feeling normal, right? I walked in there feeling just fine and dandy, but all of a sudden I'm feeling stressed, right? I don't think I'm stressed out. Cause why should I be stressed out? I was just fine. I, I then I start asking Holy Spirit questions. Is that person okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is I'll go up to the person and I'll be like, Hey, are you feeling stressed? majority of the time they'll be honest and they'll say, yeah, 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 I'm feeling stressed. But then there's times where people don't feel comfortable sharing. And then I just mind my own business. <laughs> but, um, the ones that did say, uh, that they felt stressed, God had me do something, either give them a prophetic word, pray for them or, you know, move on. So right now I'm just feeling it right now. And I just feel led to pray. So father God, I just thank you for deliverance from stress. God, I thank you for your presence. God, I pray that I ask you to come to the places where I feel stressed right now. I ask for a breakthrough in Jesus name. And, and I just thank you for complete healing and restoration. I thank you for grace to walk in your perfect peace. Cause that is your will for Myself and your children in Jesus name. I thank you for your perfect peace. Hallelujah. I thank you for your perfect peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You are a good God. You are a merciful God. You are a loving God. You care about our feelings. You think you care about our emotions. God is so good. He cares about every emotion. 
He cares about when you're triggered. He cares about when you're frustrated. Um, God is so good. The more you talk to him about it, he will just calm your, he will calm you. He will just tell, he'll, he'll just say, be at peace. Like he told me that the other day. He was just like, be at peace. Um, that stuff is so encouraging. It's so encouraging when, when the Holy Spirit can talk to you directly and just calm you. Um, he is the comforter. He is the best one to comfort you. Um, and right now, if you're needing comfort, I just thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence over those individuals. I thank you for continued comfort, comfort over my life as well. I thank you for being there for me in the night and in the morning and in the day and at work um, in everything I do. I thank you that you're with me and I thank you for being with your children as well. Hallelujah. God, you're good. Yeah, so I just wanted to share that. I know that God is a deliverer. God is one who frees us from anger. Okay, let me just read this part too, verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. I'm going to pray for just a sensitivity. God, I pray that you break off weariness right now. I command weariness to leave in Jesus' name. I pray for a greater sensitivity so that we do not grieve you, Lord. I pray for a greater sensitivity. And I pray in Jesus' name. Your word says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speak and be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Praise God, he is merciful. We all need deliverance. I mean, like, I don't, I'll be the first one to tell you I need deliverance day by day. And that's what I do in the secret place. He is delivering me day by day. Sanctification is a process. But if we're not, if we're always staying the same, what are we?